In this video, we're going to take a look at SQL by writing a program in VB.NET that will handle SQL commands, allowing you to get any amount of practice you want using SQL manipulating a database file. Here I have Microsoft Access open and I've created a database. Notice it has one table called table one, which is a terrible table name. What we're going to do today in VB.NET is we're actually going to create multiple tables. We're going to rename table one. We're going to add all kinds of fields and uh, data to our tables. We're going to create primary keys. We're going to create foreign keys. We're going to go over select uh, from. We're going to talk about how to use inner join. We're going to talk about using conditionals, doing a bunch of different SQL exercises to get you prepared for the SQL question that will or could appear on your paper one exam. Let's swing over to VB now and go ahead and get that set up. This is going to be our setup we have in VB.net. We have a button. I called this button BTN SQL code. This button's purpose is when we click it, to execute the SQL code that we're going to type in this rich text box. To get the uh, button, you're going to open up your toolbox. You're going to double click uh, button. Uh, that's just in case you're brand new to uh, programming. This is not a text box. This is a rich text box. I've named it TXT SQL. This is where we're actually going to type our SQL code. The reason we want to use a rich text box is so we can write SQL on multiple lines. We can't really do that with a standard text box. To get a rich text box, you're going to open up your toolbox. You're going to scroll down to rich text box, which is right here. Double click it and it'll put it on here. This uh, other thing that we have here is what we call a data grid viewer. So that's right here. We're going to open our toolbox and it's right here, the data grid view. And this, what this does is it allows us, let me get rid of that one. It allows us to view our tables that we have inside the database that we're going to, uh, where we're going to create our tables. Because once we create them, we need to be able to see them. If we want to select data from the tables, we need to have that output. That is what our data grid view does. And I've named it data view. What I have also done is I went ahead and programmed this uh, X button right here in the upper right hand corner and we do that under form one closing. If you don't know how I got here, what you're going to do is when you double click your form, it'll bring up form load. Just change it right here to closing and that'll add a new uh, sub for you called uh, closing. And I just changed it to margin uh, change. That is not what I wanted to do. So I'll click closing and there, application.exit. The next thing we need to do is now write code so we can actually access the database that has nothing in it. All right, the first thing we're going to need is an imports uh, statement. So we're going to do imports. That's going to be system.data.oledb. And that's because we're using a Microsoft Access file. Uh, that is the uh, system data that we're going to need and we are going to import it because we're going to be using it. You may be saying, well, we're not using it. It's gray. It will turn white uh, momentarily. So uh, just stick with me here because it will show up. The next thing we're going to do is create a couple global variables. And my first one is going to be database. It's going to be a string. And there's a few things I need to type here inside these quotes. The first one is provider and that provider is Microsoft. And it's not that Microsoft's really providing anything. We're using an access file. So that's going to be .ace .ole db, and that is .12.0. That is the version I'm using. Once you have that typed in, you're going to put a semicolon. Then you're going to type in, um, in the right spot, data source. And your data source is the path where your uh, file is stored, your database file. Now mine is in the documents folder. I named mine ECS database, all one word. And then I got to type in the file extension, which is ACC DB. That was the Microsoft Access file that we uh, created. The next thing I need is a database connection so I can actually connect uh, to my database. So I called this one uh, database uh, connection. And what I'm going to do here, that's going to be a new OLEDB connection. And then inside uh, the parentheses, the argument that it takes is the database that we have. So I'm just going to type in database and that will refer to this right here. 
The next thing I need to do is we need to set up our SQL button. So let's swing over and set up our SQL button. I'm going to go ahead and double click my run SQL code. So this is going to be the code that we're going to type that's actually going to take in the SQL code we type and actually uh, run it and uh, manipulate uh, the tables we have. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to need is a query as string, and that's going to be the SQL that I type in. And when I get that query, I want to uh, load it because when I click on the button, I need to load that query. So I'm going to do query equals, and that's the txt SQL dot text. That is the code that we're going to type in to actually perform SQL. But that's not actually going to do it. That's just going to load the query that we want to do. What I'm going to need is I'm going to need a data adapter. And what this does is it allows us to actually manipulate the database file. So we're going to do dim data adapter as new OLEDB data adapter right there. And this takes in two arguments. The first one is going to be our query, what we typed in. And then what we need is that database connection that we made uh, global. So that is why we have that um, right there. The database connection will be able to actually connect to the database and make any changes that we want based on the query. The next thing we need is a data table. So we're going to do dim data table as new data table. Let's put those uh, parentheses there. And if you've done any object oriented programming, you know we're creating an object. Once we have that data table, we're able to fill it. And the reason we want to fill the data table is so we can put it in the uh, data grid viewer that we created. So all we need to do is uh, do that. So we're going to do data adapter dot fill. And when we do dot fill, we have to put inside the parentheses what we want to fill. Well, we want to fill that data table. That's what we want to fill. Now, once we fill it, all we got to do is load the fill table into our data viewer. So we're going to do you want to type it in uh, in the right place. So I'm going to do my data uh, view dot uh, data source. What is the data? Not data bindings, data source. There we go. And what is it going to be there? That's going to be my data table. So that will allow me to uh, handle um, all the SQL as well as see what has happened. That is all the VB code we need. Um, so lit literally less than 25 lines of code and we got an SQL editor. What we need to do now is actually go over some SQL code and see what is going on with our database. A database is no good if we don't have any tables. So one of the things we need to do on our Cambridge exam, they may ask us to create a table. No problem. Let's go over how to do that. We're going to type in the keyword create table and then we got to give it a name. I'm going to call mine students. This table is going to have a list of students. So any uh, uppercase letters that you see throughout this video, those are SQL keywords. I don't want to create a column heading called create. I don't want to call it table. Uh, those are reserved words. Just like VB has reserved words, so does SQL. To make it easier to read, I'm going to put them in all caps. Now, after I give it a table name, I'm going to open my parentheses. Now, I'm going to go to the next line. Do I have to go to the next line? No, I do not. If I wanted to, I could write SQL code all on one single line. It will get rid of all the uh, white space uh, inside the lines of code. So uh, it'll work out. Um, I can do it as many lines as I want. I want to do it on separate lines so it's easy for us to read as we're learning SQL and going through this video is easy for you to see what's going on. Now, the first thing after I open my parentheses, what I want to do is I want to start creating column headings. My first one is going to be student ID. Now, after I create the column heading, I need to give it a um, data type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do varchar. I will allow it to be seven characters long. Then I want to make that my primary key. So I type in primary key. I put a comma. I'm going to go to the next line so you can see the next thing I'm doing. Make sure you put in this comma. This comma lets SQL know, hey, we're not done. We're still adding something else to the table. I want their first name. I'm going to do varchar. I'm going to allow 15 characters. I'm going to put a comma. Then I'm going to do last name, varchar, 15. I'm going to put a comma. And the last thing I want is grade. And I'm going to make that an integer. Now, 
The big problem with grade is, are we talking about their grade level or are we talking about their average grade, like their GPA? Well, we're talking about their grade level. So you may be saying, well, why don't I just make that grade level? How about we name it incorrectly so we can talk about code, how to update a column heading using alter table. So that is why we're doing it incorrectly. I'm gonna close my parentheses, let SQL know that I'm done with my uh, table and the columns. I'm gonna put a semicolon to let it know I'm done with my command, and I'm gonna hit run SQL code. Now you may be saying, uh, nothing happened. Something did happen. What we need to do now is write SQL so we can view the table and see what was created. Now you can't do multiple lines of SQL in this program. So we're gonna delete this. We're gonna do select. What do I wanna select? I wanna select everything from my students table because I wanna make sure everything's there. How do I select everything? I do select keyword and I put a star. That means select everything. The next thing I need to say is okay, I want to select everything from what? Well, I want to select everything from my students table. Type in the keyword from, identify the table that I want to do. And I do students, put my semicolon, I run my SQL code, there's my student ID, my first name, last name, grade, and uh, that's everything uh, that we had there. Student ID is my primary key because I wrote the SQL code. First name, last name, grade. Now let's go ahead and let's create another table called teachers. To create my teacher table, I'm gonna do the same thing I did for my students table. So I'm gonna get rid of this uh, code right here because I can't do this and run multiple lines. So I'm gonna do create table. I'm gonna call mine teachers. I'm gonna open my parentheses just like I did last time. Now here I have student ID. I want the format to follow the same. So I'm gonna do teacher ID. Then I'm, uh, I wanna do var char and I'll do uh, seven. We'll give them uh, seven uh, digits as well. I want that to be my primary key. Now we are following the normalization rules. Um, so uh, all our tables are gonna be uh, normalized here. So we want uh, the teacher ID number. We want their first name and I can do uh, Varchar. I'll do, um, I think we did 15 characters for the uh, students. Then I'm gonna do last name. I'm gonna do Varchar 15 again. Now this time I'm not gonna do grade. I'm gonna do um, the class they teach, like the subject that they specialize in. Now, any subject they specialize in should go in a separate table, but remember, we wanna be able to add columns and drop columns. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an inappropriate column uh, because the class they teach you shouldn't have to have a specific teacher ID uh, to have a class that you teach. So though that column is not gonna be solely dependent upon uh, the primary key, which violates a normalization uh, rule. But we're gonna drop the column and then we're gonna add a column that will do um, their room uh, number. So we have uh, the first name, their last name, and uh, we're gonna do the class they teach and we'll give uh, 10 characters for the class they teach. I'm gonna put a uh, close parentheses. Now this close parentheses is a close the open parentheses that I have up here. I have an open and close parentheses around the 10 because when I'm using varchar, I have to say how many characters I'm allowing. So this close parentheses that I have here is for the first open parentheses that I have up here. I'm gonna put my semicolon. I'm gonna run my SQL code. The other table looks like it disappeared. It didn't. Because we don't have uh, select from, we're not viewing anything in our data viewer. So now we're gonna delete this. I'm gonna do select everything from teachers. And you wanna spell teachers correctly. Teachers does not have a number in it. I'm gonna put my semicolon and then teacher ID, first name, last name in class. Now we have two columns we need to fix. The first one is inside the student table because it says grade. We wanna change that to grade level. Then what we need to do is update uh, class because class is not dependent upon teacher ID or the uh, teacher, um, but the class room they're in does. So we're gonna uh, delete this column class then we're gonna add a column, a uh, classroom name, so you know how to drop columns and how to add columns. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So let's go ahead and let's update this teacher table here. So what I wanna do is I wanna alter table, 
what table do I want to alter? Teachers, what do I want to do? I want to go ahead and drop this column. What column is that? That's class. Put my semicolon, run my SQL code. The next thing I want to do is alter the table teachers again. What do I want to do this time? I want to add a column this time. What column do I want to, do I want to add? Room number. What is the data type of that? Let me put, there we go. What is the data type of that? That's going to be an integer. Run my SQL code. Then I do select from teachers. And when I run this code, you'll see that room number has now been there. If I do the same thing for students, I can do the same thing uh, for students. I can change that grade to grade uh, level. What we need to do now is talk about how do we populate uh, actual data into these tables. That's what we're going to talk about next. Let's take a look at how to do that. When I want to insert data, there's a couple things I want to do with my program first. Anybody can enter anything into here, and I want them not to be able to do that. So what I want to do is I want to click on my data view uh, grid. I want to scroll over to the read only property, and I want to make sure that that is set to true. Once it's set to true, nobody, nobody will be able to simply type in information. Because remember, the point of this program is to write SQL code. So what we're going to do is we're going to do select from students because we want to see what we have uh, to work with. And we're going to insert data into the students. Now, I can do this in any order I want, but I do have to let the computer know the order that I want to do it. So I use the keywords insert into. What table am I inserting data into? That's my student's table. Then I open my set of parentheses. Inside these parentheses, I'm going to put the values, or not the values, the column headings that I want to manipulate. So the first one I want to do is student ID, comma, first name, comma, last name, comma, grade level. Then what I want to do is go to the next line. I'm going to do the keyword values. I open my set of parentheses. Now the order of the values I type in must correspond with the order that I have here inside this set of parentheses. So my student ID number, 53001234. Putting that in single quotes because that is varchar, not an integer. So I need to put that in single quotes. My next one, first name. The first name is Luke. His last name is Johnson. And then his uh, grade level is 12. Now, because grade level is an integer, I don't need to put that in single quotes. I'm going to put my semicolon. I'm going to run that SQL code. Then I'm going to do select from to make sure that he is actually there. So I want to select everything from students. Run my SQL code. You can see Luke Johnson is there. It's now ready to set, accept a new uh, name. So we can also do a teacher. So let's do a teacher. Let's do Mary Swanson. So I'm going to run that SQL code. There's nobody there, so let's put somebody in there. So we're going to insert into what are we in what table are we inserting information into? That's going to be the teacher's table. Now I open my set of parentheses. I'm going to do teacher ID, but then I'm going to do last name followed by first name. So like I said, you don't have to do it in order. Then I have my room number. I'm going to use that keyword values. I'm going to open my set of parentheses. The teacher ID is going to be five or five four zero zero one two three. Her uh, last name is Swanson. Then her first name is Mary, and then her room number I think we did as a integer. So we'll do her room number as five four, or we'll just do it as one two three. So we'll say her room number matches her ID number. Um, we're going to put our semicolon. We're going to run this SQL code. Then we're going to do select from teachers. We want to select everything. And we see Mary Swanson is in there. And notice her first name is Mary, even though we entered the last name uh, first correctly. What you may want to do is uh, go ahead and populate these tables with some more information, because what we're going to do next is search for specific um, output that we want, looking for certain criteria inside of our table. So you can see I've added some names to my database, specifically to the students table. So we have Lucille Tithing, who's in 11th grade, Frank K. 
Kidson, who's in 11th. Luther Layington, which should be Lexington. Now, that error was made on purpose. I left an X out of his name. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can update that data. He's in uh, 10th grade. Mikkel Schwartz, who's in 12th. And Luna Suave, who is in 9th. If you look at uh, Luna's uh, student ID, she's missing a zero. So that is another way um, or another example of how we're going to update uh, data that is already existing into a table. So let's go ahead and uh, let's fix uh, Luther's last name. So what we do is we do update. Then I identify the table I want to update, which is students. That's the table I want to update. The next keyword I'm going to use is set. I want to set a value. I want to set student ID equal to, or not, we're fixing Luke's last name, sorry. So we're going to set last name. We'll do Luna's ID in a minute. And that is Lexington. That is what I want to set. Now, I need to say where I want that to be set at. And that needs to be set where the student's ID, so I say where student ID, so where's your uh, conditional uh, statement? And I want to set it where it's uh, student ID is 5300. And when I look at uh, Luther's, it's a uh, 126. Now it's very important that I do it by student ID in this case, because if I'm looking to see where it's just the first name and we have another student named Luther, that means we're going to overwrite everybody's last name who has the first name Luther. By doing it with student ID, which is our primary key, is only going to update this one specific person. So I'm going to run that SQL code. I'm going to view my students and you can see Luther has been updated. Now what we need to do is we need to update Luna's student ID. So I'm going to do update. What table am I updating? Students. Set. What value am I setting? That's going to be student ID. And I'm going to set that equal to 53001288. Now, I need my conditional statement. Where am I setting that? And I'm doing it where. Now, this time I'm going to use um, Luna's uh, first name here just to show you that it doesn't have to be done with a primary key. Now, if there was more than one Luna in the database, so if it's a college with 40,000 students, chances are somebody's going to have the same uh, first name. I'm doing this to show you that you can do it with any uh, conditional statement you want. So I'll do where first name is equal to Luna. We're going to run our SQL code here. It looks like it's going to update. We run it and we can see that Luna's ID has been updated. Now, something you may uh, point out is you may be saying, when we look at this database, it's all out of order. We have grade 12, 11, 11, 10, 12, nine under the grade level. I wish we could put all the 12th graders together, together, all the 11th, all the 10th, all the 9th. The great thing about normalization and databases is it doesn't have to be in any specific order order because I can get all the 12th graders printed uh, together, all the 11th, 10th, and 9th. So let's say we want a list of all the 12th graders. Then what I want to do is I'm going to select everything from students, but I want a conditional statement. So I get rid of that semicolon and I say where, what is my condition? Where grade level is equal to 12. And when I run that SQL code, it's going to give me everything for the 12th graders. It's going to give me their student ID, their first name, their last name, and the grade level 12. Maybe I only want the first name and the last name. Maybe I don't need student ID. Maybe I don't need to see the grade level. Maybe I just want the first and last name of all the 12th graders. So what I'm going to do is, let me just get rid of all this so we can start from the beginning. Select. Select what? I want the first name. And if I want the last name as well, I put a comma. And I say last name. So instead of doing the star, I'm putting specifically what I want. From students, where, what's my condition? Where the grade level is 12. So I type in grade level equals 12. And then what I do is I run my SQL code. Now it gives me the first and the last name of anybody who's in grade level 12. So you don't have to output everything. You can output only the things you want. Maybe I don't want the first name or last name. Maybe all I want are the student ID numbers. So I do select student ID 
from students where grade level equals 12. Now I have the ID numbers. Now let's go back and let's show everything from our table. Now let's talk about how do we get these grade levels? How can we get it to go in ascending order where we get all the ninth graders listing, listed first, all the 10th, 11th, and 12th? Let's go ahead and talk about it ascending and descending right now. We want to select everything from students, but this time what we want to do is we want to use the keywords order and then buy. So I type in order by, and then I say what I want to order it by. I want to order it by grade level. So I want to select everything and we're going to order it by grade level. Do I have to select everything? No, I don't. I can do first name and uh, order do it in order by grade level but let's just do grade level and see what we get when you run the SQL code notice it's doing grade level and is doing it in ascending order if I want to show Cambridge I want to do something in ascending order I'm going to type in ASC I'm going to get rid of this semicolon and I just type in ASC I run my SQL code it doesn't change what if I wanted to do it in descending order not a problem what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to type in D-E-S-C, which stands for descending. That is a keyword, which is why it's on all caps. Put my semicolon, I run my SQL code, and now it's doing it in descending order. Uh, it's going ahead and moving everything. You'll notice the student ID, the first name and the last name moved along with the data. But maybe I don't want to do it by grade level. Maybe I want to do it by last name. So I'm going to order by last name and I want it to be in ascending order. I run my SQL code and now we can see the first last name we have starts with a J, K, L, S, S, and then T. So you can also, uh, you know, generate uh, information you need by doing order by. The last thing I want to show you in this video that will cover all the basics is how to do count. So maybe we want to count how many students we have total in our database. I mean, here we can uh, quickly count and see that it's uh, one, two, three, four. We can see that it's six uh, people. Uh, if we have a database of 44,165, nobody's going to go through the database uh, counting each row. Uh, so maybe we want to see how many students are currently enrolled uh, wherever we are. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do select count and count needs to be in all caps. Now I'm gonna open my parentheses. I need to say what I want to count. Now, what I wanna count if I'm trying to get an accurate count of the students in the school, I need to count what is the primary key. Do I have to count the primary key? The answer is no, I do not. I can count whatever I want, but because I'm trying to get an accurate count of the students, I wanna count the student ID. So I type in student ID. Now I need to identify the table because remember we also have a teacher table. So if I say select count student ID, I haven't given it enough information. So I'm going to put from students. I'm going to put my semicolon and now it's going to count how many different student IDs we have in the table students. And it says there are six. Now notice this uh, EXPR uh, 1000, that's an expression uh, that was used to generate uh, that output. Um, but we can also count how many 12th graders. Maybe uh, we have graduation coming up and we need to know, okay, we need to, you know, we're given every senior four tickets. We need to know how many tickets to order. We need to figure out, okay, how many seniors do we have? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do select and I'm going to use the count command. What am I counting? Well, I'm counting uh, grade or I'm counting, um, yeah, grade level. And I want to see how many uh, there are um, from students. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. We're counting grade level from students, but I only want to count 12th graders. So I put in my condition where grade level equals uh, 12 put my semicolon, run my SQL code, and you can see there are two uh, seniors. Now, I don't have to count grade level. I could count a student ID as uh, well. I'm just showing you there's, uh, you can, you know, count different things, but this will show me how many 12th graders are, how many 11th graders are there. So I type in 11, I can see there are two 11th graders. How many 10th graders are there? 
oh, there's one tenth grader. How many ninth graders are there? And it should say there is one. And oh, I typed in grade level one. That is not how you represent a ninth grade. And then we have uh, one, which is a total of uh, six. Hope you guys found this video helpful building this SQL editor. You now have unlimited practice uh, that you can do to prepare for that uh, paper one exam. But if you did find this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And as always, there are more videos on the way. We'll see you guys in the next one.